we're going to do a tutorial today on custom shapes. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about what custom shapes are, where to get them, and everything like that. Uh, you start to get your shape tool, you can just hit the keyboard shortcut on U, or if you go over here on your uh, toolbar, you'll see right there. And once you scroll down, you'll see uh, if you hold Shift U and tab through, and you can come up with a custom shape. You'll notice the shape over here. You can also get that if you click and hold on the toolbar. And I'm just going to slide the toolbar over here so it's a little easier to see first. And you grab on the tool, you select, select it right here. Custom shape tool. Now that we have that selected, I'm going to put that back over. Okay. Now, with custom shapes, uh, I tend to use them mainly just to throw my signature in there. And I have a bunch of different custom shapes. I'll open this up, scroll down. And you can get shape packs and stuff online. So I'm going to grab this shape. And we're just going to place it and hit enter. And there you go. You have a custom shape. That's just all I did was I created a vector shape out of that. And I'm going to explain how I did that. And you can do that as shapes, pixels. There's lots of different ways to place it. Right now I had it selected as shape. So it actually showed up and can scale as a vector object. You can select the color of the bee and everything. You could just go here and choose pixels and make a new layer and place it. Very similar result, but you just, you, it'll be a lot more pixelated with that. This one you can actually scale in forever. Let's clear out our canvas and just make a whole new custom shape. And in this scenario, I went online and I pulled up this photo. And there's a few things we're not going to want in here. Like we don't want these people in here. And I'll erase those out really quick. And basically what I really want is just kind of this rock area. And I want to get rid of everything else. And I want the bottom to be kind of a jagged or edge. So there's a few ways we could go about. We could do a quick select with W and start selecting out these areas. That'd be one way to select it. Another one, we're going to use a combination of few. But the first one we're going to do is going to start with color range up here and select go to color range. And then you'll see we can just kind of start clicking the different areas. And I'm holding shift. And it's letting me select all these colors. And you see my selection is showing most of what I want selected. And I can go in here. I can change the fuzziness. And I want to have it so it looks like it's a pretty solid block where I just have that rock select. So I can slid it down to 16. We're going to hit OK. And you can see it did a pretty good selection of getting rid of all the sky. There's a few spots that I don't want to remove. You can see there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit L for lasso tool, hold Alt, and just cut those out. And now I'm just going to hit Control X. That's going to cut that out. So we have most of our shape now. I'm going to hit L again. Then do a quick rough selection here. And same over here. You can come in here and you could use an irregular eraser. I'm hitting E to bring up my eraser and just erase out these edges. You don't have to have this perfect because the, the uses for custom shapes are pretty broad. A lot of concept artists that'll use them. Kind of just get a rough base of what they want down in their painting. In this case, you could purpose here would be like this rock selection. You want to just get a quick rock in there. It looks realistic and has all this texture. So I'm just going to go through. Using the lasso tool again. Very useful. Big selection. I was saying controls X because it's closer than hitting going over and hitting delete. It's cutting it. I'm not I'm just not gonna paste it back in. Now we want I want this edge to be a little bit more jagged. So there's a few ways we could just use W and see how it's making kind of a rough selection. And that's just the magic wand tool. And I'm gonna hit control H. That's gonna hide everything. And now you can see I'm kind of erasing in. In chunk sort of. I'm just going to make this edge a little more natural looking. I don't want it to be a, such an abrupt square edge. Show the origins of the photo there. Okay. You can see I have this all on its own layer. Transparency. I'm going to actually duplicate this just so I save this kind of origin one. And we're going to turn that off. And now I'm going to do control shift U to desaturate. Or you could you could go up into your leave its image adjustments, uh, hue saturation. You can slide down the saturation. In there. I just did a shortcut. The other shortcut to pull that up would be control U and that pulls up your hue saturation layer. I'm going to close that out. Okay. So I've got this now. And what I want to do is I want to create 
a really high contrast image out of this. So I'm going to go up to image adjustments and I'm looking for the curves. Hold up the curves here. And you could do this with levels as well. Basically, you could just use the levels on the bottom of the curve area if you don't want to mess with curves. But I want to do a little bit more intricate stuff. I want to do a bit of an S curve. I'm placing these points and just kind of moving them around. So I get something a little closer to what I want. And I want that really high contrast looking stuff. So I want, might want to keep some of the texture on the back side of the rock as well. I'm just going to keep selecting, tweaking, and modifying this. There we go. See, it's starting to get nice, nice shape there. You could come across this and do like uh, some filters and stuff if you want to tweak it even further. Now, I want to select all the black area and not the white area. So I'm going to go up to select. I'm going to use that color range again and just click it once. We have a pretty good selection of the black. In this case, I'm going to cut that out. And well, first, let's undo that just as a safety precaution. Let me duplicate that layer, make a new one, use the new one. And now I'm going to go back up to a color range selection. Click on just the black area. We could modify it slightly here. OK, now that we have our selection, I'm going to cut that. I'm going to hit Control shift v to paste it back into place. And over on my Layers tab here, you can see I split that into two. I'm going to turn off the background, kind of the grays and stuff. And you'll see I have a pretty nice selection of just all the black areas. If that's a decent selection of a rock. We have a pretty base rock there. We could go in. If we wanted, I could go on that layer and just modify stuff a little bit. Kind of think about what I want my overall piece to be. You might not know what that's going to be if you haven't done it before. In this case, I'm, I have my, I want to turn off the uh, opacity filters here. I get kind of like a, I have to go into brush settings, turn off transfer. There we go. Just to kind of give an edge here. You could go in, you could modify the shape a little bit, get a little bit further from the original. Really, whatever you want to do. Once you've made one or two, you'll start to realize what you're actually looking for. And I'm just doing this to kind of give it a little bit of a closure. Add a little bit of texture or something. So now that we have that, we're actually going to go scroll over to, well, not scroll, but we're going to go over to the side panel here again. Click on Paths. And uh, before I do that, we've got to make a selection. So I'm hitting Control and clicking on the layer. Go over to Paths. And under this drop down tab on the side, I can't see all of it, so I'm going to bring it over to the window again. Right here, and say make work path. And you only can do this once you have it selected. So it's going to make a work path out of this selection. I'm leaving the tolerance at just standard. You're going to see what that comes up with. It's pretty crazy, the shape there. Like it made a really intense shape, maybe a little too intense. Uh, I could go back in and maybe reduce some of that. Let me undo that again and think about some ways that we could reduce that. So maybe with the layers, maybe I'll just do a quick click selection like that. Cut that out and see what we get. We'll turn that off. That's a lot. That's a little too, that's not quite what I want. That's not enough. Another thing we might be able to do is do like maybe, a, we'll do a filter, try like a stylized one or my filter gallery, I'll pull that up over on the other screen. Maybe if we do a cutout. Dry brush cutout. Might have actually been better. See, this is one of those situations where maybe I should go back to an earlier version. Back to this one and duplicate this layer. And I'm going to do a filter on this before we go on to the next step. This is how it goes with these to figure out what you need as you go. I'm going to do the cutout one, see what that comes out with. Kind of simplifying it already. That's kind of nice. And mess around with the edge simplicity. That's actually making it a little, so let's actually make it a little less detailed. 
Melody. Control that, see what it comes up with. I liked it better at the lower setting. It has a nice geometric shape there at that still setting. Number of levels. If you actually crank this down, we can really mess with it. But I think I'm going to leave it at 8. Click OK. So now, here's what we have now. If I undo it, Control Z, you'll see it's very different. So, I do miss that little bit of rock over here, so I'm actually just going to paint that back in really quick. Okay, just kind of like the shadow keeps the information. Now we have that. I'm going to duplicate this again. Close the other layer. Go up to my select again and do the... Oh, actually, sorry about that. Go select, color range. Like the black area again. And we're going to cut that out. Turn that layer off. Paste it back in the scene. That's a lot more simplified. I think that's going to make a better shape. And you can keep editing along the way here. And you'll see I have it on its own layer, transparent and everything. And I'm going to control select that again. And we're going to go over. And we're going to open up the path window again because I closed it earlier. Normally it's by your layers. And, and I'm going to go to a new work path. Leave it at default. Hit OK. And you'll notice that that didn't take as long this time. It didn't have to calculate as much. Pretty clean shape, has some nice uh, selections and stuff. But at this point, we're going to put this back over on the side. Oops. Tag it back into this window. And now we're going to go up to Edit and Define Custom Shape. And I'm just going to type Rock. Now you can get rid of your selection. You could you could at this point get rid of all your layers. You just want to make sure it works before I get rid of everything. We're going to hit U again, pull up your shapes. And you might be on the wrong shape again, so just remember you can hold Shift and you'll see this button. I'm doing Shift U and it's cycling through. We want the little little person, that's what I always think of it, like a little ghost or something. And here you'll see we have a custom shape set up in here now. I'm going to grab that custom shape, go up here and make a new layer. And I'm holding shift so it keeps its shape, shape, but if you don't hold shift, you can kind of skew it out in different shapes. So you could start just putting these together and making a mountain, something like that. The really neat thing about these, like right now I have them set on pixels. You could, you could set them to uh, paths, shapes, or whatever you want. I'm going to put them on pixels. I like to paint with pixels more than shapes, more than vectors. So say I wanted to make a painting really quick and just do like a black and white one or something. And I have my foreground area here. I want to put my background area back here or something. I can just start grabbing those shapes, pulling them in. And I could just back, stack them. And I'm already starting to come up with an environment here, just with a few clicks of the button. <laughs> clicks of the button. It's a terrible phrase. I don't know why I said that. This with a few uh, selections and whatnot. And I could use some other shapes I've made if I wanted to, or I could just keep using this. And it's dependent on the color you have selected. If I had a color, it would come in with that color. So you could take that, and now it's all flat, and I could go in here. I wanted to put another layer on top of here. And with that selection, we're holding all, we're gonna tag it down. And I just wanted to kind of add some depth of feel or something here. I could start painting over that layer. Uh, in a gray or something like that. Oh, I gotta select my gray. Just to push back, add some depth, or you could paint with, you could start throwing gradients across it, all different kinds of things you could do with this. Really great way to come up with some quick stuff for your paintings, sketches. But yeah, so that's, merge that down. That's how you use custom shapes. Lots of ways you can use them. It's a really, really effective way to get nice texture into your paintings or whatever you want to use them for. Like for me, mostly I just use them to place my signature at the end. Go up here, grab my signature, select my color, drag it in.
And when you have it in the pixels, it automatically gets pixelated like that. If you were to use, go back to custom shapes and do a shape, it's gonna be a new layer and it's a custom shape layer. And the, the nice thing about that though, over the pixels, is when I scale this up like that, looks really nice. Say I were to do the same thing, we'll make a new layer. And we're gonna do, instead of shape, we're gonna do pixel. And make that the same size. It looks fine like that, but when I scale it up, look at the difference there. You can, huge difference. So depending, if you're going to scale your painting up after you've already sketched or something, it really just use your best judgment for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for checking out this tutorial. I'll have more tutorials like this. Uh, you can subscribe on my Patreon.